Welcome to another explanation video. We're going to be using the online whiteboard tool that you get with your online GMAT just to show you how to use it. Um, so let's get into the question itself. We're going to be working on a tough word problem from the GMAT official guide. This one's dense, it's got a whole bunch of variables, and it tends to be that uh, GMAT tutoring students screw this one up because um, often they misinterpret the actual question. So the first step is to read carefully. Don't skim, don't skip words, don't paraphrase, read through word by word verbatim. Digest as you read, really think about the moving parts. Once you're done reading, go ahead and define the question. And this is where people mess this one up. Often you get um, a comparison of price to earnings instead of a comparison of ratio. So often you see GMAT tutoring students say, hey, it's P to E. But it's not really just P to E. It's P to E to P to E. It's a comparison of ratios. It's a comparison of fractions. It's the old P to E compared to the new P to E. All right, so let's go ahead and get that one defined. And I would use the keyboard because we don't have any um, strange symbols here. We don't have exponents. So I think the keyboard works nicely. And so we're going to do our percent change formula. And that's just our new, uh, and I'm just going to abbreviate, just calling it the ratio to the old one, and minus one, and it's a percent change. We want a percent, so multiply by 100. Now, you might be saying, oh, huh, that doesn't look like my percent change formula. Well, it's the same as this, new minus old uh, over old. Same thing, but uh, this one is just slightly modified. In my mind, it makes it a little simpler. And for whatever reason on GMAT questions, it tends to be that this one is a little better. New over old minus one times 100. Okay, so we've got our question defined. Now we need to figure out how to put our variables into that question in order to output an answer. You might say to yourself, huh, well, we've got variables in the answer choices. Didn't you say we could pick numbers in that case? Yes, of course you can. And the test whether you should pick numbers or not is... Would the question be easier if you just had the numbers? And the answer is, yeah. If you just had the numbers, you'd just be plugging in each ratio, and then you'd be crunching those numbers, and you'd get the answer. So let's think about whether we have any constraints. And we do, um, but nothing major. It's just that k has to be greater than m. So the increase in, in the um, share price is um, greater than the increase in earnings. That's all. Everything else is really open. So I would just go ahead and get the structure here. We need to define the P and the E, the new and the old. I would start with the old, and then you derive the old, uh, the new from the old, using K and M to um, bridge the gap there. And we're dealing with percents, so why not use 100? Can earnings be the same as price? Yeah, why not? Doesn't say that it can't be. And then pick K's and M's that are easy, 20, 10, 10, 5. I'm just going to go for 10 and 5. And so we're increasing 100 by 10% to get the price and earnings by 5% to get the earnings. So now we've got all our numbers, and we just need to plug them into the percent change formula. Uh, in terms of this online whiteboard tool, I would just go ahead and make a new space here to the right. You don't have to stay in that same box. Give yourself some space in there. And now we're just plugging stuff in. It's that, and then the bottom is that, right? And then minus one. That's it. Now we're just trying to simplify that. And just be smart about this. Let's just look and see if there's any way to make this a lot uh, easier at all. And notice that the denominator is just one, because it's 100 over 100. So that's no problem. That's gone. And I would, I'm going to do this one in my head, 110 over 105. You don't have to. You could write that out. But I see that it's 22 over 21 because they're both divisible by 5. And then I know I'm subtracting 1. So 1 is just, if you're subtracting it, just take the denominator of the other number and put denominator over the denominator. That's how you get your common denominator when you're subtracting by 1. Easy. Um, and that's it. And then we're just left with this, and then we multiply that by 100, and that's our answer. Because we picked numbers, 
we now have to take our k and m, our 10 and 5, uh, plug 10 and 5 into the answer choices, and we want to yield 100 over 21. If you follow this uh, blog, you know that normally picking numbers, we take a little uh, divisibility shortcut here at the end. And notice that the denominator has to end up being 21 in the correct answer. So we're looking for a multiple of 21 in the denominator. 21 is composed of 7 and 3. I would be looking for the prime that has the easiest divisibility rule. 3 is easy because you just take the digits of whatever number you're testing, you add them. And if that number is divisible by 3, the whole number is. So we're going to be looking at um, the answer choices in terms of divisibility by 3. If the denominator is not divisible by 3, or not a multiple of 3, same thing, then it can't be the correct answer, because eventually we need a number that has uh, a 3 in the denominator. So I can see right away that A and B won't work, because 1 is 2 and 1 is 5, and those numbers have a denominator essentially of 1, which is not divisible by, by 3. Uh, C, D, and E, we're just going to test. So just looking at the denominator, C is 110, not divisible by 3, because 1 plus 1 is 2, which is not divisible by 3. D works because 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 is divisible by 3, so 105 is as well. 115. Lots of tutoring students look at this and say, oh yeah, 15, that's going to work. But 1 plus 1 plus 5 is 7. 115 is not divisible by 3. So because D is the only um, answer choice that is divisible by 3, that has a denominator that's divisible by 3. It's the only one that could end up being 100 over 21, so it has to be the correct answer. Now, um, what happens if you get two answer choices that have a denominator that's a multiple of 3? That's totally fine. In that case, just plug in the numerator, and that should eliminate um, one of your answer choices. In terms of online whiteboard, I don't think you're really held back on this one because there's not a lot of arithmetic. You don't have to calculate very much. This is all set up. And I think you're going to see that a lot on the GMAT, that like most questions are all about the setup. There's not that much in terms of follow through. It's not an arithmetic test. And uh, to the extent that you're doing things in a GMAT kind of way, I think that you're going to find that the online whiteboard although clunky, works fine and doesn't necessarily hold you back. The more you try to brute force things, the more you're doing a lot of heavy lifting with arithmetic and you're just kind of trying a whole bunch of stuff out, the more you're going to run into a wall with the online whiteboard because the more you try to do with it, the more difficult it is to use. That's it for this video. Hope you found it helpful. Comment with any questions. Comment with uh, your experiences, either on this question or with the online whiteboard. Uh, good luck uh, with your GMAT studies. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.